the video chat up so that if for some reason YouTube decides bye bye again, um, I can see us and I can go, guys, we're gone. And I'll keep the Facebook, I'll keep an eye on the Facebook. All right, so you guys can see most of us. All of us? Everybody? I think so. I mean, I'm look. I'm watching our YouTube right now, and it looks like we're all there. So yeah. Okay. So however you have it set up, Sam. If you have it set up in gallery view, then we're all there. We're all yeah. there. I Hi. need you, YouTube. <laughs> Huzzah. Um, My wine is here, guys. And Facebook Later. decides to fail on us at the same time because everybody's trying to stream. Uh, so I'm gonna do some research and see if there's a better method of doing this. Maybe I can host it through the website I own. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, back idea. to it. We have, I'm gonna try and do this the way I've got it streamed. There is Thermo Cosplay Sidekick. That is her name, apparently. Thermo Sidekick. Um, yeah, you're doing it right. <laughs> over here. There's Ambright Props over here. There is G's Cosplay here. And there is Ambrose Cosplay here. <laughs> I feel like Brady Bunch. So, um, yeah. Hi, everybody. We're back. We're alive. And I'm watching a little tiny sliver of our video and seeing motion and making sure the motion remains. Amber Bright Pops was talking about how glorious she is and how she is a prop maker and <laughs> not necessarily a professional cosplayer because that has other connotations associated with it that she's like, nope. <laughs> just to summarize. It, it's just one of those things where people are like, oh, you're a professional cosplayer. I'm like, Okay, let's be honest. There's only like four or five professional cosplayers in the world. It, they're, the ability to make money off of cosplay and nothing else. And is, sponsorships, like. Yeah, sponsor, like, yeah. I mean, A, getting sponsorships is hard. And B, like, there's, they generally pay for that build and not like your food and your rent and stuff like that. So the, the whole professional cosplayer like that's a whole can of worms that I'm always kind of like I'm a prop maker who also cosplays and the cosplay is like my branding and advertising and my hobby like I mean there's nothing on this specific outfit that I am you know doing in my store or anything like that there's no props on this one so this one's a for fun cosplay essentially so it's it's one of those things where I I love when people love cosplay enough to want to make it a vital part of their life. But I'm always like, you have to actually think about where your revenue stream comes from because trust me, you don't make enough like off of just print sales to, you know, live and to, to, to do everything that you want to do. So it's it's always a question of where's your money actually going to come from because it's not going to come from the cosplay like i tell you that <laughs> Steve is back you're still missing your little antenna though i think i'll just i'll play around with it i want background but be I'm careful gonna... though you might get us blocked again it could have been background, pretty sure it was you don't Sam. know we don't pretty know sure it was what you it's your fault we don't know what you did <laughs> copyrighted and what they blocked so no labels <laughs> so I'm not using one either i was thinking about using one when i went to go get my uh, beverage but then i was like ooh. I don't want to yeah. be the one that causes it this time. We actually couldn't find the because we're we're staying in um, my husband's a cabin, um, and we couldn't find the the wine bottle opener. I'm like, oh my god, crap! And I was like, okay, well, give me a beer. I was like, wait, no, I can't. <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> just, right. just drink it like like I've been. Ooh, nothing. I poured happening. mine into a glass only because I didn't want the logo on there just in case. But yeah, the the topic about branding and marketing, it's. I know I just said, you know, like professional cosplayers, not a thing, but every cosplayer needs to think about branding and marketing, whether you're a hobbyist or you do want to make it full time. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you want to increase your reach, if you want to grow, if you want to have um, partnerships with other people, if you want to have sponsorships, if you want to do this as anything more than just a page that you put your cosplay on you've got to think about your marketing and your branding yeah, like, for us uh, even we found that by having cards and having branding that something so simple as 
you know, random photographers in the con have taken pictures yeah. of us that we loved and we yeah. only got a hold of those pictures because yeah. whenever they took our picture, we always handed out a card and said, would yeah. you tag us? And then mm. we got that tag and ended up getting that picture and some of them ended up being really good pictures. So yeah. even if you're not doing anything else, just to get a hold of the pictures and have people show you what pictures they've taken of you later. Is yeah, a hundred, a hundred percent. If you want to see the pictures you take at a con, you should be passing out business cards. Yeah, and not a that huge too, investment. It, huh? like you're talking about like passing out business cards. I'm just interrupting. I apologize. Um, no, sorry. But the thing about that too is you end up finding like if you pass it to photographers, you end up finding really good photographers too. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, I've had photographers that I've, I actually, I, because I don't remember the names because I see so many hundreds of people at a convention that I handed a card off to and they contact me two months later and they're like, oh my gosh, I really wanted to work with you. And I'm like, what? I'm just, I'm just little Sam. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. So like sometimes your cosplay speaks for itself and then it sticks in their head and they're like, oh gosh, I know I saw them and they find that card and you're like, it's this person. Yeah. And you, and as a photographer, if you take a really cool picture of a grandmaster cosplay, like how do you then find that cosplayer? Do you go and Google grandmaster cosplayer? Like you're, you're not going to have any luck with that. No. So if, if it's, it's a lot of times, um, I mean, some photographers will take a picture with your like, or write it down or whatever, but a lot of times it falls on the cosplayer to make sure that it is you, your photographers that you work with can find you again, yeah. or just people in general. Like if you meet somebody who's really cool and loves the same weird French, uh, uh cartoon that you like, like you want to be able to reach them again and marketing and branding yourself is, is how you do that. So like, you don't have to spend little hours thinking about this, but every cosplayer should consider how do you get people back to you? <laughs> I just want to, just want to take a quick break because I think, um, Liz, did you introduce yourself yet? You came in yeah. late. You did? Yeah, Sam did. Um, Oh, I missed it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were getting your wine. I was. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm sorry. Okay. Good. It was an important, important job. Yes, I see you. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to show, I don't, I actually don't have, I thought I had a business card with me, but I mean, you know, you can make it as, as, you know, detailed or as simple as you want. When we say business cards, it doesn't even have to really be business cards. Um, you know, it can be anything. If you want to just print your handle out on pieces of paper and hand that out, if that's all you can do, or, you know, it's in your budget right now, like don't go and spend hundreds of dollars on business cards, you know, mm -hmm. at least not yet. Like obviously if you're going to take this more seriously down the line, then you can look into it. But right now just, you know, something that people can contact you with or find you on the internet with, um, like I said, you can just print maybe like one picture of yourself like, multiple times in your, you know, um, Instagram handle or whatever. Um, so don't don't think that, oh, my God, I don't have a budget for business cards yet because I just started cosplay. Um, never. We have a question cosplay. about the cards. Do you build a card holder into your cosplays? Sometimes. I, <laughs> I do as much as possible. Yeah. And sometimes that card holder is boobs. And sometimes it's it's actually a that's card my card holder. holder. That's her. That's my card holder. <laughs> She's over here for me. <laughs> my card holder is just off the screen there, but uh, but and going back to to Jess's point about the cards is, um, I have a friend Amber who cosplayed uh, Jolteon, and she wrote her contact information on the inside of her shield. So like you take a picture with her. And then she just open show the back of her shield and you could take a picture of her contact information. So you don't well, even need to do cards. Like if you build it into your um, cosplay to have your information somewhere. Actually, that's a good, that's a good point too, because a lot of people do that. Just like, can I just take a picture of something instead of holding mm -hmm. up the cards? Um, especially with, like, I think with the younger generations, they're really into that. Um, so that's, that's another way, way you can do it too. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Any way you can save money or, you know, be more cost efficient. That's so important in cosplay because you want to spend that money on your cosplay, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, a lot of the so. times, um, you know, like little, like, like the old little fanny packs, the ones that are just fabric and has a little tiny zipper on it. Those mm -hmm. are all over Goodwill and thrift stores. 
You can literally just kind of sew them or Velcro them into the inside part of your costume somewhere and just unzip, pull out a card and zip back up. If you have a holster for your gun, you can tape um, a little pocket to the underside of the holster. If you have, like, look at Sam's um, gauntlet, she could easily hide some right in there. Um, on this costume, I would probably hide them in my little cuffs or in the top of my boots. It's one of those things where, or even like have just a pouch at your back. Um, you want to have a way of having money, ID, phone, and Cards. cost Essential. on you yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. So whatever you build into that, you know, you can build. If you having put it party. somewhere where you sweat, though, please put it in a plastic baggie so I don't have to take something soggy from you. <laughs> you can't sweat this part. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> but also, there, like, talking about, like, um, you know, building into your costume, I like to build um, pockets whenever I can. So that's another thing that you can think of, obviously, for like, like Amber said, your essentials and stuff that you just need on you all the time, especially like phone. It's always handy just like slip that, you know, in your pocket when someone's taking a picture or something. Mm -hmm. So any anytime you can build a pocket, like do build all the pockets. Yeah. Like, pockets Vaughn just mentioned QR codes. Like, hell yeah, mm -hmm. what an easy mm -hmm. thing to be able to like hide on your cosplay somewhere, just a QR code and you can be like, bam, boom. That's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Wow. My business card actually has a QR code on the back so that people can just take a picture of it and automatically go to um, my website. QR codes is one of those things where it's not actually that hard to generate one and they're very handy. So yeah, really for sure. My cards actually, I'm super proud of them because I took a graphic arts class and one of the things we did was put a QR code in it. So. Oh, really? Do you have a copy of yours? Not Andy? in this room. Okay. <laughs> I, I can go one if you want. That's, that's cool. It, you know, it, but, but that, you know, that's a really great thing too. You don't even need to put the QR code on cards. Again, you can put it on one thing and people can just, you know, use it, put the QR code and then people can just take pictures of it. That's great. She has oh, there you go. Look. That's awesome. QR I wonder code. if I can, can I, can I, can I use, do it now? No, it's funny is, like, the camera's like, and go. And we're just suddenly at your site. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, everyone go to my website for it now. Uh, speaking of, of like going back to business card branding, um, these are specifically cards that I made for cosplay specifically. And they're different from the cards that I have for my props, um, in part because A, it shows my cosplays, and B, the text is a little different. Um, I do love the QR code. I also always try and leave some space somewhere on the card that I can write something down. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, like you have a, a, a card and you hand it to somebody and they're like, oh, but I don't know what cosplay you were on. I always try and leave some space on my cards that I could just write like cat noir or something like that. Because at the end of the day, you can have a stack of business cards. Like if all the photographer has is this, and I'm dressed like this, you know. <laughs> yeah, so Sometimes we have another that comment doesn't, too yeah. about um, skin tight costumes. If you're gonna wear a skin tight, skin tight costume and you wanna find somewhere to put your cards, you need to create a bag of some kind that matches your costume mm -hmm. because at, you are going to need something at the convention. Like, like Amber mentioned, you're gonna need money. You're going to need probably car keys. So I would suggest even if it's not canon, create a bag that at least matches the character and you can always set it down <laughs> But while taking pictures and then hand, hand out the cards. Um, people don't expect you to be exactly like the character and magically pull things out of the air. You're human. You are not in a cartoon or a comic. So you don't have hammer space? That matches would work. You don't have what? access to yeah. hammer space? Bad. No, I mean, I guess not, if you're, you're really creative and you have enough room in your wigs like I do because my head's so small, you could create a little pouch and just tuck it up in the back and just pull out a card. I mean, that would be the best magic trick. Hang on a second. What the? <laughs> <laughs> what a do, grandmaster. It's my card. <laughs> I do something similar actually in Melina where I keep the cards in the back of my oh. collar so I can That's just nice. be like, whoa. <laughs> mm -hmm. whoa. So we've talked a lot about cards. Um, and that's a great way to kind of brand yourself. Um, what else do you guys do to to brand your name to kind of get out there who you are? I mean, social media is like the one of the hugest ways to do it. And we all know because obviously we're doing it right now. 
Um, you know, but the thing about social media is consistency. Mm-hmm. Um, you can make a page, you can make an Instagram, you can do whatever you want, but if you're not posting on it, it's, it's, it's dropping down in people's visibility in, in their feeds. Um, so that's like the most important thing is consistency with your social media. Mm-hmm. So. I think that's a, a marketing thing more than a branding, but I think it's consistency in how you're posting and what you're posting goes along with the branding because the, one of the, the pros and cons of being a cosplayer is that people are going to kind of judge what you cosplay. Like somebody who follows me for my Twila might see Cat Noir and just be like, meh, whatever, you know, not interested in it. Whereas somebody who follows me for Salem might hop on and be like, wow, there's a lot of Star Wars stuff. That's kind of cool. I like Star Wars too. So a lot of what you need to do as a cosplayer is how do I take kind of these separate cosplays and build a cohesive and unified person behind those cosplays? Mm -hmm. Because people support cosplayers for one of two main reasons. They either love the character or they love the cosplayer. And so you're either doing a popular character that people love and are really attached to, or, and that's, that's good. That's a way to get people to you, but you keep people by building who you are as a cosplayer so that then when you do something that they're like, I don't know what that is. I don't care what that is. They can still appreciate it because they appreciate you. And I think that's for sure. The name. Like, what are the- I think that cause like we're, we're, we're thinking out big. I'm thinking, let's start really tiny. Before mm-hmm. you can even brand yourself, you have to have a cosplay name. And I get asked mm-hmm. so many times, I'm not even kidding you, I've been messaged so many times personally, how did you come up with your cosplay name? I'm like, thermo usually means heat, and I live in a desert, and the first product I used was thermoplastics, so thermo cosplay? And then from there I realized that, like, okay. it, it, it apparently gave me, like, this, like, intimidating factor that was unintentional but all the characters that i've been i started cosplaying after i named myself were like really like Mer! and until people got to know me until i could like you were talking about until i could fit my personality into my cosplay and then people were you know, like oh cool she's more relaxed it's fine we're gonna see stuff up and down every spectrum and be be prepared for a roller coaster um <laughs> there was this period of time where people were intimidated with me and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> so be careful with your name too and maybe have like a little if, anecdote if or named, a story yeah if you're named like squishy kitties cosplay and you do like hardcore gore and <laughs> no that's stuff, cool like, like that's it's cool gonna, yeah but i'm just saying like people are gonna have that moment of wait what <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that branding, actually. I hope somebody takes that idea. <laughs> this is so you the, to only do, like, the gore stuff. You can't do cute right. stuff, because then it makes sense. It's not supposed yeah. to make sense. Yeah. So. But, um, yeah, so, what, like, when we talk about creating a name, like, like it's, it's one of the most difficult things, because, like, I'm Jinx Cosplay. I've been using Jinx since, like, 2000, and, like, actually, I've been using it, like, online since, like, 1996, and it's obviously not a rare name you know there's jinx obviously in league of legends is the most popular thing people think i'm like oh are you a jinx cosplayer i'm like no i'm jinx <laughs> so you predated that jinx <laughs> yeah so i mean obviously for me it's the name i've had for forever there are other jinx cosplays out there i only managed to snag like the jinx cosplay handles um but when you're thinking of your name you want it to be as unique as possible obviously you know that's going to be difficult and then something obviously that that means something to you so, um, you know, and that's the most important, like, like Liz, how did you choose your cosplay name? Um, Ambrose is one of my middle names uh, and I always really liked it. Um, it makes me think of like sword and sword and stone, King Arthur, Guinevere sort of things. Uh, so I don't know. Um, I thought it was unique. I looked it up. Nobody else had it. So I took it. Yeah, absolutely. So always look them up to and see what it is, you know, what's out there. I mean, there's so many Jinx cosplays, but like, like that's her middle name, but it sounds really cool. You know, it sounds, yeah, you know, yeah it, it sounds like I would say more regal, like a regal cosplay. And you, you do a lot of really, you know, princessy stuff. So that's, yeah. that's it, you know, and Amber, I mean, yours is similar. Yep. Mine is my first and middle name. So, and, and it's funny because those, uh, those who have been fans of mine for a while know that I started out as Firelight Cosplay. Mm-hmm. And then about a year or two into it, I switched to just Amber Bright. And we talked a lot 
about whether or not we wanted to make the transition from cosplay to, um, from Firelight cosplay to Amber Bright. And we tossed around things like Firelight creations and Firelight props and stuff like that. And you'll notice if you're watching what I'm, I'm doing, I'm kind of slowly branding myself into Amber Bright props. Um, and that was a very deliberate move that we made because I want like, I see myself doing the props for the rest of my life. I don't see myself doing the cosplay for the rest of my life. And I want the props to be kind of my main focus. So we intentionally rebranded to something that would allow that freedom of being more, I'm going to say this, this is not 100% more than just a cosplayer, if that makes sense. It gives you longevity because, you know, even 15 years from now, Amber Bright props will still be, if, if, if cosplay for some re whatever reason, like falls off the map, which it won't, you know, Amber Bright props still make sense. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, right now it's pretty dead. Yeah, <laughs> not going to lie. Another, not going to lie. Right now it sucks. <laughs> and, that's, and that's another thing is like when you're making a name, you know, there might be an inevitable, inevitable name change and that's a huge deal. So when you pick your name, if you do plan or even if you don't plan to take make something big out of it try to take it seriously because one day you might you know I started cosplay like back in 2001 like there was no such thing as like pop you know famous cosplayers like even mm -hmm. Yaya Han back then would, she was she was pretty well known but she was not nearly you know at the stage of, of you know fame that she is now um so I don't think that we had thought this was going to be a big thing yeah. um so you know definitely try and think about it if you're going to make a change you know if you have a fan base I would say no you know, don't do it. it you know, because it's, yeah, it'll it, it'll be difficult, I think. I was only at a thousand fans when I went from Firelight to Amber Bright. And now, three years later, I still have people go, weren't you Firelight? Like, three years. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go to the they recognize that, yeah. Here, I'll just use her to hide it. There oh. we go. There you go. Oh, that's what's going to be the next thing, huh? Live <laughs> cosplay accessories. <laughs> don't do it. Don't, guys, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> so, um, after you do your branding and you kind of create your, like, you create your name, um, you know, there's some people like me who I still can't make up my mind about a logo. So I literally just have really fancy text with my name. And I until I can make, make up logo. my mind with my logo, that's all you get. <laughs> But other people have logos. Like you'll notice our page, Cost Talk Live, has a logo. I literally created that logo in 30 minutes. I could create a live logo, but I can't create my own. Yeah, it happens. And and I mean, like like Amber, like um uh, Amber, Amber has you know yours is a nice script with yep. your name. So sort of. you know it doesn't always have to be words. It doesn't always have to be pictures. But it kind of is what you want people to like burn in their memory. Mm -hmm. Um, and like Liz, you have a really cute one with the needle because your primary, primary, primary skill is, um, sewing, right? I design you do that logo. So you do what? That's awesome. I designed that logo too. <gasps> That's my, awesome. So I designed it, like I drew it and then my sister did it digitally before <laughs> I took a digital art class. Nice. Um, but then when I took a digital art class, I designed a second logo, but I digress. But yeah, I did design that logo and I actually really like it. <laughs> That's awesome. It's really cute. Yeah, for sure. And then Sam, you need to jump on the logo train. Come on. Mm -hmm. Choo choo. We're going without you. Choo choo. Lena, you want to take this one? <laughs> marketing step. <laughs> Next step forward. Hey, I'm not bad, side guys. Pick. Just so you all know, I've been trained as an artist. I have an animation degree. I've illustrated comic books. I've been hired what? to do illustrations for medical journals. I am actually an artist and I can't make my own logo. Mm -hmm. I can make it for it's others, just but to, I can't make my own. <laughs> sometimes it's worth it just to, to pay somebody else to do it. <laughs> Maybe I should. Yeah. <laughs> like here, here's me in a nutshell, just make something. Yeah. <laughs> Lena, you throw yeah, in, for sure. hey, Lena, mm -hmm. throw in what you like about yourself. I'll throw in what I like about myself. Go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good night. Yeah, well, and I mean that is the alternate to branding. So I'm I'm the weird one out here, which is why I've been a little bit quiet about all this. But, but uh, Lena's the master of networking. So when we get all into weird. networking, which we're yeah, about to go yeah. into, because when you start, that's one thing. Like we can roll into it now too. Like after you've created your name and your logo, 
um and and you've probably established a couple social media pages just to make sure you claim your name then you want to start networking because people right now are complaining about the reach and most social media pages and websites and it's because they had to limit it i mean obviously the scope of these pages is growing and they're free so unless you're paying for advertising you're not going to get as much reach and you're not going to get as much um likes or follows so you really have to network at conventions and that's where those cards and QR codes and social information comes into play because you reach out to anyone that seems to at all be piqued by what you are wearing. And that's where uh, you know someone like myself comes in. Um, you know, I don't I don't do a lot of the the stuff that these that everybody else here does. You know, as far as branding myself and all that kind of stuff, I really live right off of Sam's stuff because I just don't have a lot of free time, but that doesn't mean that I can't cosplay and that I can't help build a, a, you know, a brand. I just help build Sam's brand rather than trying to make my own. And we find it works pretty well because, you know, when she's at a con and really busy and, you know, is trying to take pictures and do all this and that and the other, I'm just sitting there like, have a card, have a card, have a card, have a card. Like she, I always joke, but it's true. She does all the hard work, like, 90% of the time, but at the con, I am like, I am her PR representative. Like, you need a card, follow us on social media, like, do the thing, like, I'm like, make sure you do whatever. Like, we, so many cosplayers, like, beginning cosplayers are, like, shy about giving your card out. Like, give your card out. It is I sometimes, I still don't give my card out. Like, it doesn't, like. I get mad at you because (laughs) your stuff is amazing and you're allowed. And see, this is one of those things that, like, like, kind of steams me is that people are so quick to shame, like, cosplayers for the hustle. But, like, in any other industry, like you have events like E3 that are literally just networking events. Yet somehow like a cosplayer giving her card out at the convention is like like shameful or whatever. Like, no, honey, give out your card. Like, yeah. Well, that's where it works really well that I'm doing it because then I'm, oh, I'm that person. And like (laughs) Sam looks like the golden child of like, I would never (laughs) hustle somebody like that. And I'm like, hey, you want a card? (laughs) Sam looks sweet until you mess with her and then, uh uh-oh. Oh, yeah. 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 But her, her, her... it's a good note too for anybody that out. wants to get into cosplay but doesn't feel like they have the time to to brand themselves, to build the big costumes, to do all the things, but you still are interested in in cosplay. Like find somebody and be their handler. Like cosplayers always need a handler. You find somebody that wants to make a huge build and then you just build yourself an easy character that's in that same universe. And it looks so much cooler when there's two people from the same, you know. Well, and a lot of the time, or whatever. if you want to help a cosplayer too, that cosplayer is going to be so thankful that all you yeah. really have to do, like Lena, and there are many times where I'm like, Lena, will you join me? If you just buy the materials, I'll make it for you. And I like make it, and I'm like, here, here's your costume. She does. She makes, she makes all the costumes. Like, yeah. she makes so many costumes. <laughs> Sam just passing Sam's out costumes. Sam's done it for me. Making Sam's it rain. like, let's do this group. And I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, here, I made your costume already. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm happy now. <laughs> I'm not perfect yet, but it's teaching me things. <laughs> she's very clever. Yeah. So, yeah. So when you're creating that persona, I mean, it, uh, the persona is like, don't stress out about the persona. Like it's you. You don't need to like find a character. Yeah. You just need to find what you are and what, how you want to present yourself. Yeah. Um, so if you do want to be squishy kitty and you do want to do the goth thing, like that's cool. You know, so that's your persona. Um, but if you're just, you know, like a cool chick, like, you know, like Sam or Liz or Lena or Amber, I just oh, love you, know, you know, so, but stick with that. Try not to, you know, and, and, and this is, and I'm going to kind of go into like celebrity talk a little bit. Like, obviously we're not actors, we're not stars, whatever, but it's similar. Like when you're in the public eye, people are going to have this image of you. Um, and you know, your, your followers are going to love that. And that's why they, they like you. They like you because you're, you know, you're a cool prop maker or you, you know, one best in show in San Diego comic-con, you know, it's like stuff like this, like, Oh wow. She's an expert seamstress or, Oh my God, she knows all sorts of different skills. And I don't know about all these expert. Things. Well, and that's one thing, we just have another comment about, you don't always have to even be a cosplayer too. You could be a cosplay medic and people will flock to you. Yeah, I've seen them like, they will flock to you. 
<laughs> and you'll be like the master cosplay medic of Arizona. We're like, this one, go forth. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. So I'm just I'm just looking at a comment. Um, Vaughn says I've been a handler so many times. I usually go as my yeah, cosplay medic. So just so you guys know, cosplay. Vaughn is Chris, my brother's friend. The power. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Chris. yeah. <laughs> Chris is awesome. For sure. The one we stayed at in Tucson. Yeah. 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 For meeting Definitely. people like, for the new, you know, you know, first time. I've, yeah, for sure. I've seen a lot of like, like I've seen power armor and like, um, uh, a, you know, a, a vault dweller, like kind of like that big build and, or like the big daddy and little sister. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's always this kind of like, if you, if you want to, you know, I mean, you're, or you can just buy your costume. Like you can buy the vault dweller, um, jumpsuits. You can buy little sister. Like if, if, Cosplay is anything that you want it to be. You know, it, it's your rules. You know, nobody's, there's no like government of cosplay. Um, yeah. No police anyone, cosplay. Anyone who tries to tell anybody else that they're cosplaying wrong, they can go jump off. They of are wrong. Right. And like we <laughs> said, like you don't have to create a persona, but if you get comfortable yeah. in cosplaying and you find that you only want to be like, you're like, no, I love Sailor Moon. Like I am Usagi. Yeah. And you want to be that persona and you want to create yeah. every iteration of her outfit go for it it's fine mm -hmm. embrace that character if that's what makes you happy that's okay it's all yeah, about we'll one what makes that. you happy huh? go there's ahead. only one cosplay rule that i think is actually true and that is it is perfectly fine to buy your cosplay it is not fine to buy your cosplay and lie and say that you made it that's yeah. the Absolutely. only real yeah. rule that i actually agree with i've heard some people say Oh, if you buy it, then you're not a real cosplayer. I didn't no, this. I do not agree with yeah. that. Like I didn't. But make don't this. lie. <laughs> I bought this. It had a lot of problems. I had to tailor the living f out of it and to fix it. But I still did not make this whole thing. All I did was tailor it. Yeah, and you don't have to come out and straight say like I bought this. Just if somebody right. asks you, did you make it? Don't you, say. You can't say you. Yeah, did. I made it. If you didn't make it. Right. And I mean, yeah, I did all these parts of it, then be like, well, I made this, this, and this, but I purchased this, or I went to a thrift store and I repurposed something. Like, just, you don't have to go into the thick of it. Just say, no, this is what I did real fast. Like, please tell the truth about whether you made stuff or not, because if something's really good, I want to know where you got it so I can buy yeah. it myself. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wanted to just touch on this. I'm sorry, I talk a lot. Um, but I just want to touch on this whole like buying cosplay thing. Like, like I said, like 15 years ago, it was, I mean, we didn't have cosplays to buy, but commissioners, you know, when people started getting more experience, it was almost taboo to buy a commission cosplay. And it's, it's taken a while for people to kind of get out of that elitism. Like, well, you're still supporting cosplayers when you're buying commissions. Yeah. Then when manufactured cosplays came out, it was quite mixed. You know, um, well, what the heck does that make you a cosplayer or a model or what, whatever? But really, it's like cosplay is literally costume play. Nowhere in there says you have to make it. Nowhere in there says you have to buy it. You just wear a costume and you play in it. Like that's literally all it is, you know. So I mean, if if you want to make a persona and you're buying costumes and you never make one, that's fine. Like don't be like, oh my god, am I a real cosplayer? Like. For me, I kind of had some personal issues with buying cosplays, but that's because I came from an era where it was taboo. So mm -hmm. I've, obviously I'm okay with it now. I bought a couple of cosplays and it's fun. Buy cosplays is fun. You know, it's like- but it, I like if it shows up and you put it on and you're done, like you don't have to be up until 6 a.m. crying and <laughs> bleeding all over it. You don't have to like sew yourself inside out and like be standing in front of the mirror sobbing, what is going on? <laughs> it's what nice is my life? to get like, a, like a, a package and be like, Done. Let's rock. You know? I buy yeah. cosplays so that I can limit the work because I've never bought a cosplay and put it on and it worked. I've had to tailor yeah. every costume I buy because I don't have yep. large bosoms and because I have a big butt. Yeah. <laughs> so, you got I'm tiny and tall, so yeah. Like, like all spins um, went down. I don't know about that. <laughs> I saw a picture where you had very large bosoms. Like, can you explain? <laughs> Wait, what who are you talking about? Sam's or Amber's? <laughs> I got lots uh, of them. Let's talk about Sam's, but we can talk about Amber's boobs if you want. I do, I do love my boobs. Like, if we're gonna, if we're gonna talk about branding and marketing, like mm. part of my persona is somebody who loves my boobs unapologetically and loves other people's boobs unapologetically. So, you know, your persona, your your cosplay person can be whoever you yeah. the hell you want it to be. And I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, look, I love Sam's boobs. It's similar to Amber's. I love other people's boobs. Mm -hmm. And while mine are small, I still enjoy them because I can just take the fake big ones off 
and then I can compress and become male or female. It doesn't matter. Oh, I wish we could share that picture. You just shared it. It's oh, on let me see if I can so find you go it. Thermo cosplay on Facebook. Our profile picture is people worshiping my fake drag queen boobs. Oh, this is gonna happen. <laughs> Jen, I just give me, so give me like fun. not even. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it. Me. But um, so also I want to touch on that a little bit, but it's gonna be a subject for another conversation. Um, you know, it's like if you want to go, you know, the lewd Patreon, like oh, oh what is it, OnlyFans route, like do it like if people tell you something else like it's your life you know yeah, it's, it's, it's your decision yeah. Yeah. you know don't let people like, say oh you don't want that persona because if you do you do you know yeah. and it's one of those things where it's i get i get pushed so for those of you who don't know i do the patreon with the boudoir and lewd and oh my god i have so much fun with it like it's one of my favorite things ever and you, you do get a certain amount of pushback for it, but I think a lot less than, than you would anticipate, especially in the cosplay scene. Most cosplayers enjoy the crap out of everybody else enjoying the crap out of cosplay. And if your thing is doing a funny boudoir or a sexy boudoir or a fun boudoir, like there's room for that and there's, there's support for that mm -hmm. too. And that can be part of your persona. Like, like if you go to my cosplay page, there's props and happiness. <laughs> and oh my God, Lena, that's amazing. that's the picture. <laughs> I'm trying to find it. Oh. <laughs> it's too bad you can't see the actual cleavage in that picture because it's like bam, it's like there. It's you know, aggressive. <laughs> really aggressive cleavage. And I just want to touch, I just want to make one more comment about the whole, the lewd thing, because I want to save it for another conversation. Mm -hmm. But, like, I I haven't done it yet. Like, I, I would like to, but in the past, I did modeling, and I did lingerie modeling and stuff like that. And it is so empowering mm -hmm. for women. Yeah. If you've never done it, like, do it in your, the privacy of your own home. Yeah. Like, it is so empowering. And I get why so many women do lewd cosplay, because it feels so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it feels cool to be sexy, you know. So mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, we'll touch on that another time because that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But yes, please, you know, it, don't let anyone talk you down. Yeah. If you're trying to do yeah. No. no Unless no. you're like, you know, like a politician or, or something like that. Like uh, maybe you need to. I think. Some lines. I think the gray area for me is if you build a persona off of um, cosplaying really young anime characters. Yeah. I, don't really want to see you boudoiring or looting up really young anime characters. And like you'll notice child. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like there, there are a few, yeah, there are a few characters I've done that will never have boudoir shots Version. of them. And one of them is Gage from Borderlands because at that time of the game, she was like 14, 15, 16. I think she's something. even younger. I think she's like 11. In the yeah. She's very really freaking young. Yeah. Like, obviously, I am not young, so if I were to do boudoir, like, it is not a the same as a 12-year-old doing it. But since the character is young, like, that's my no thank you. Like, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I agree on that. But, yeah, so, you know, your persona, again, like, we're just going to summarize it. You don't need a persona, but if you want to build one, you know, stay consistent with it. Yeah. I mean, if you change it, you know, that's – people change over time, so – you know, that's your whole that's thing. So, I mean, going it's, into branding, yeah. Yeah, it's a delicate line because you don't want to build this fake persona, but yeah. you also don't need to share everything. Like, I mean, I guess you could, if, if that's your persona, the super real person who shares everything. I personally am not comfortable with that. Like, um, I recently uh, suffered a death in the family and I didn't really put it anywhere because like, that was something I didn't. So uh, we got an information. Tiny Tina was twelve, and Gage was seventeen. Okay, seventeen is a little bit better, but it's still like Agreed. she's still too young to yeah. do boudoir. Yeah. So, so twelve when she first appeared is what you said. Twelve. Oh, Tiny Tina. Tiny Tina. Oh, Tiny 12. Tina. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, sorry. So I'm gonna okay. move us along to make sure we cover ground, and we talked okay. about um, other cosplayers enjoying your cosplay probably as much as you are. And I want to mention that cosplayers are another great, great place to go network, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of us travel or we hit different locations or have different interests and we might be able to pull you in another direction that you never even knew was possible, yeah. right? 
So, yeah. I mean, I... Sam. Um, Sam does that for me. <laughs> for and sure, Amber, Sam does. Amber did that for me. Like, Amber mentioned Mass Effect one time, and I saw some of her props, and in my brain, I was like, I can mold and cast and make a silicone mask. Let's do it! And, and then you pull out it. Thane. <laughs> and Thane is, like, the best thing ever. So, I, I was... Hashtag win. It was like, right there. yay! Mm -hmm. So, well, and on top of that, that, that you can learn new skills. They mm -hmm. might introduce you to additional social media channels that you weren't originally aware of. Like, I never actually was, I was never familiar with TikTok. Um, I was on, like, Tumblr and Reddit a lot, and I was always wondering where these, like, little videos came from before TikTok actually, like, improved their logo. And so... I was like, where are these videos coming from? And then all of a sudden someone's like, you should do this. And I'm like, this is cool. <laughs> I'm just a little old lady. <laughs> yeah, I like the same. <laughs> and whenever you're moving on to a new social media platform, reaching out to uh, cosplayers and other people who are successful on that social media platform. Oh, look, yeah, he's posting my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I love Thank it. You, so that's marketing. She's your marketing me manager. Yeah. Yeah. She's doing her right job. <laughs> She's doing her job. Give her a raise. Yes. <laughs> raise. Yay. Like <laughs> an extra costume this year. I mean, yeah, if you want one. I've got, you know, stuff. <laughs> yeah, so branding yourself is similar with Persona. Um, like, even if you're just starting and you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not going to, you never know. You might end up viral or something and, you know, oh, oh now I got to manage something. So just at least keep it in the back of your mind. If you're, if you're just doing it for fun, just just consider that one day you might brand yourself. Well, like, Liz, you've um, been in a lot of, like, cosplay groups. How did you get wrangled into all of those? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, think about I just, the performances you've done. You've just like, how did you network and like, how did these people find you? I mean, awesome. I just love dressing up um, with people. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think that I kind of had the benefit of um, a lot of the friends that I knew in high school and college were theater people. And so it was really easy for them to transition right into, yeah, let's start doing cosplay. So they were kind of like people that I already knew uh, just from school. Um, and then since then, you know, I've met a lot of new people at cons um, and we've done groups together. I just love doing groups with people. Yeah. You know, I never did groups. So I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking again. But I lived overseas and I came back and I met Sam and Sam's like, let's do this. Let's do wait, that. Wait, let's wait, do wait, this wait. You need to slow this down. I interviewed her when she was still living overseas. And then we encountered each other at a con and went, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, and then she like, stalked me for a little bit, and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I, 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 are cool." And then it I, ended up being super cool. So I was like, "Amber, were you at so and so park?" Yeah, she like literally she's like, she's, like, she's like, "Were you just walking around this park?" And I'm like, "Uh." <laughs> you didn't. You you took some time to answer too, and I don't yeah. answer straight away because you answer me straight away now. Yeah. But before she was like, I think it was like maybe like eight hours. Like, yeah, I was what? just like, uh. Because I had that. I had a girl who, like, um, messaged me, and she's like, I'm coming by to visit. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> hard no. Yeah. The first and then I learned I, that Amber and I lived, like, a mile apart. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. Amber and Lena and I did a costume several, I want to say it was, like, twenty late 2014, early 2015, something like that. We were, like, Raven, uh, Jinx, and Starfire. And Starfire. I messaged yep. Amber, and she was like, who the F is this? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I'm not building that Starfire, but I'll come hang out if you want. So if you message cosplayers, don't try not to be creepy. Apparently, like the excitement made me creepy. <laughs> so just be like, hey, I saw this is happening. I was looking to join a group. Would you be interested? Is there a safe place we can meet up? And generally, we'll be like, oh, okay. You just want to create together, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Saying yes to that group was one of the best decisions I ever made. Like, I still look back at those photos and I'm just like, oh, like a beautiful friendship. So, oh, that's like, cute. like, like, be open to to experiencing things with new cosplayers and, and new groups because you'll make friends that you never knew you never knew. So, um, speaking of that, though, uh, if you don't mind, if I pivot off of that point, 
Um, I think we've all had experiences with people that were a little bit too friendly, if I'm going to use a politically correct way to say it. Yeah. What are some things that you guys do when we have people that we are ready to like, like, I appreciate that you like this, but you can't follow me around the entire con the entire day. Yeah. We it's just had that at Kikuri Con. Like, he wasn't as bad. Like, I think he was just lonely. Um, he was a nice guy. And he was a he nice was guy. Nice. And thankfully, when we when we bluntly told him, we're going back to our room, we're tired, we've had a long day, he said, okay, cool, I'm going to leave. Now, that doesn't always happen. If they continue yeah. to follow you, you need to basically put your foot down and say, I am going to my room, and I do not want you to join me. Please understand that this is us separating for today and if they continue to bother you you find security because you shouldn't have to basically shove someone away from you find security go like if you're at the hotel where we were at go talk to the front desk and, and just kind of slide them a note if you're uncomfortable with saying it out loud and generally they'll help you take care of it find con staff find security they're usually wearing different colors or even walk up to like a stranger and if you really, you, I've done this only once. <laughs> Walk up to a stranger and be like, can you believe this dude keeps following me? Can you help me out? The other person generally gets so embarrassed that they like walk away. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I told you Sam can be, she's sweet. Mm -hmm. She can be vicious. Mm -hmm. I told you guys. I only did you that kind once. Of, <laughs> to, kind of wrote this back, line. to kind of rope this back into something we were talking about. This is kind of one of those things that, ooh, wine <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> But this is kind of one of those hide things the label, where, hide the label, like, yes. your, hide the label, hide it, hide the label, hide it. No, don't shut the <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 this don't it for her beer label. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is one of those things where, where knowing your boundaries um, for your, your public persona does come into play because I personally don't want somebody that I don't know coming up and being like, oh my God, I heard this about your personal life, like blah, blah, blah. Like I, I'm the type of person who only likes to share things um, with certain people. Like I don't, I just don't like, I just don't like it. I just don't like want to talk about personal matters on a con floor. We had that happen um, at WonderCon two years ago. Uh, my dog had just been paralyzed and we were afraid of like cancer and stuff like that. And we'd gone through and I'd posted about it on my Facebook page and he was doing well. We went to WonderCon and like every person is like, oh my God, your dog. And I'm just like, like by the end of the con, I was like, I can't, I can't do that. I can't have these in-depth conversations on the public con floor. And that's my personal boundary. So that's a choice that I make to not talk about those things on my public page. And it's important for you to go into this, like knowing where your boundaries are, because people will assume that you're best friends. Yeah. Like, and, and see, like, I like, this is why I like having a handler or having a sidekick, as Lena likes to call herself. She's my sister, but what else? But anyways, I, I appreciate it because Lena knows that there are times where um, I'm competing or I've, I've run a bunch of panels or I'm basically mentally and emotionally drained. So my my uh, assertiveness is gone. Like my usual, uh, like, hey, offstandish nature when I feel like I need to be defensive is absent. And she usually takes over and is like, we're going. And she just like grabs my arm and walks off. And like the person's like, uh oh, we're going. And she's like, no, we're going. And she'll like point to the two of us and then we go. And I'm like, oh, okay. Cause my brain wasn't working. <laughs> It can be very hard, and and especially like in our subculture, you know, the geek and nerd subculture, it can be very hard for confrontation. So I know that this might not be as easy for a lot of people as we're saying, like, I'm going to do this, you're going to go that way. Um, so have people with you. Never go alone. Yeah. Like, if you can, at least one other person, or if you feel unsafe and you're by yourself, like, maybe, you know, just find someone, like, talk to con staff, or, you know, there's always going to be someone that will help you. So if you can't do it yourself, Go please to the find someone. You know where it is. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, that's something that you don't need to, um, you know, deal with. If, if something makes you uncomfortable, please just yeah. get yourself out of that situation. And you will get I, episodes while you're networking and while you're broadcasting and branding yourself and expanding your reach. You will get individuals who will try to troll you or who will post inappropriate things. Almost every single platform has a settings area for language. 
please mm. set it to make sure that any and all inappropriate language is immediately blocked. What I have it set to is if someone says an inappropriate word, it goes into an administrative panel and I decide whether or not it's allowed to be posted. Um, or I'll go in there and I'll edit it and I'll put like little emojis because if someone's like, F, that's awesome, and I don't allow the F word on my page, I'll just really quickly like put all the little like lettering and then block, like I'll, I'll post the comment, but lock it so that individual cannot change it. It's good to have more than just yourself have access to your cosplay page. Mm -hmm. Like it's just good to have and, and have it be a trusted friend, a partner, somebody else who can have access to your cosplay page. So that like, God, like a couple of years ago, I had a post that went like semi-viral. It was about um, uh, gaming as a woman. And of course it was video of female gamers and like the comments that they got in game. So it's just, it's literally a compilation of the, the treatment that women get in game. And it went viral. It had like something like a million hits on it or something like that. I had, I recruited like two other people to help me keep on top of the comments. And that up until that point, I was very much a, I'll allow almost anything on my page and give people like a free strikes rule, right? Like I'd warn them, et cetera, et cetera. After that experience, if you say anything douchey, you're gone. Like just period. Because I realized that for my own safety, my own peace of mind. Oh, there's the kitten. There's my black cat. Um, Spoopy. 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 Hi, Spoopy. Um, but yeah, so for my own, my own peace of mind, I decided that any sort of comment that made me go, uh, was gone. I'm not gonna, right. I'm not gonna be out here for people to like take pot shots and stuff like that. And that was one of those things that I decided early on that <clears throat> my persona does not tolerate. That's, that's a good thing. You have to establish yeah. your boundaries early. Yeah. So yeah, um, we're moving we're gonna, into real what? quick, let's, let's give it, anybody have any questions, post them real quick to the, the chat on YouTube. Uh, we'll give you a second to post it. And while that's happening, I'm gonna let Ambrose officially introduce herself because she didn't get to do that. <laughs> I asked if you did and you were like, yeah, no problem. I introduced her, but now let's like, we have time and we need to fill that time while they're posting their questions. So please, okay, please okay. proceed. Boost. Okay, well, hi, I'm Ambrose Cosplay, uh, but my, my name is Liz. Um, this is my very casual Natasha Romanoff look that I have. Um, as you guys can see, a brief tour of the room. We have the head wall back <laughs> here where I keep the heads of my enemies. Um, it's also her guest room when she's not using it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's great staying. Hey. Here, uh, with the with the heads watching over you at night. Um, oh, my favorite. But, but yeah, I felt pretty thoroughly introduced. Uh, but I I can talk for longer if you need me to. Uh, yeah, talk how about you, how so, you do your no, social media? What how I do my social media? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I I can actually I have a person who who posts on my social media. Um, just because. Uh, I mean, like, I have a like Amber was saying, yeah, I have a full time job that keeps me pretty busy. So like, I have like a person that schedules like posts for me. All right, um, so... Just because like, I would never post during uh, yeah. work days, mm -hmm. if it were up to me alone. Right, <laughs> so, so I definitely have, question, guys, have like a happened. person. We have what, what have you found are the most effective social media channels? So let's go through the list of what I can think of right now. So I'll, the big one's obviously Facebook because it's been around the longest and well, it's not been around the longest, but it's, it's the most prominent. So probably Facebook, Twitter, um, uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Tumblr is there, but it's sort of on its way out. Um, it I forgot about in, Tumblr. I'm like, I know it ebbs and flows. Then there's Reddit. Reddit's actually really big guys. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, Reddit um, can be really good. Yeah. People think it's like a troll space, but it can be right. really, really good. It depends on which subreddit you're in, because there are a couple of, of cosplay subreddits that are fantastic, and the mods are on top of it, and the community is great. 
And then you get to like the Street Fighter subreddit and it's oh like, no, hot yes. garbage. Like. We'll, we'll, we'll separate forums out separately. Let's just talk about the main things because there's other yeah. forums too. So we'll talk about forums in a second because those are actually good for networking um, and branding yourself. But like I'd say Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Um, like well, Sam, do you want to Twitch? talk about uh, Instructables and how you've gotten a lot of people follow us from because of the Instructables you do? Yeah, so mm -hmm. Instructables.com, um, and that actually leads into forums, so this works. Um, a great place to network, oddly enough, is Instructables.com. I knew about it because I have an animation degree, and at the time, it was an Autodesk, Autodesk run website, and they offered a lot of tutorials on how to do 3D animation and 2D animation and what software was the best and how to use it. And then they opened up their forums to other people to submit tutorials, which was great. So I was like, cool, I'm going to start submitting tutorials. And now I have well over 100,000 views and it keeps growing every single week. It's crazy. I'm not even trying to promote it. Um, and I've been sponsored because of it by the Warblet Company and Cosplay Supplies. And now I'm sponsored by the Cosplay Pros of Arizona. Um, it's established this really strange networking because people go there there's no no harassment like if someone goes there and says something inappropriate instructables is usually faster to get rid of the comment than i am um, that's what i love about instructables is um i have one too although mine's a lot smaller but um they have a be nice policy like if you say something that's mean or inappropriate like it's gone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's good they have really that... great contests too so if you submit to a contest your name is posted on their on that page of the contest forever until they decide to delete that contest. And even if you don't place, your tutorial still stays on the main page of that contest. So they kind of promote you inadvertently and their tagging system and their hashes are amazing. So um, Instructables is a good place to start growing, especially if you wanna be like, uh, if you're really big into prop making, if you're really big into um, anything that's going to be a product that you're providing to somebody else. Um, because think, that might be how important. someone goes, oh my gosh, this is a quality product. Yeah, I think it's important to note that each social media faucet, first of all, Cosplay Amino, nobody uses that. Second of all- I know, um, it was like Cosplay Amino, I forgot about Cosplay yeah, Amino. Yeah, nobody uses it. There's like a hundred people on it. It's it's not- Cosplay like Amino, that. like that's, yeah, because I see that, I see yeah. Cosplay Amino and Cosplay Goals, they, even Cosplay.com, they go yeah. through periods of spikes and then they plummet yeah. again. But let me tell you about cosplay.com. Like that was the only thing we had. I feel like so old when I say this. That was the only thing we had back then and the forums were bustling. Like now they're so dead, but cosplay.com, we had cosplay lab rats, cosplay, um, American cosplay paradise. Like those were our social medias and they were just websites. So I got as far as a lot off of DeviantArt. Back yeah, Deviant, actually, yeah, yeah, I forgot about DeviantArt. Yeah. DeviantArt and Pinterest too. So let me, I want to just talk about a little bit about this. Facebook, apparently Generation Z does not use much of Facebook, um, which I imagine they're now on TikTok because TikTok's become this whole crazy thing. So I think TikTok is like really good for cosplay. Instagram is really, really good for cosplay because it's all about aesthetics. So cosplay um, on Instagram so goes really well. This sounds weird. Twitter? Twitter? Yeah? Yeah, if you take Twitter, because Twitter has a much further reach than any of the other platforms. Twitter hasn't That's really true. restricted their reach like other systems, right? So for instance, Fangirl Nation Magazine, I write for them and we have over like 25,000 people. And like, it was just, it was, we really developed it through our hashtags. The hashtags are way more powerful, powerful on Twitter than they are on like any other platform. But you have to use That's them wisely. That's the thing yes. with Twitter hashtags. Like Instagram, and this, this is kind of what I was trying to say is that each cosplay social or each um, social media platform has its own pros and cons. Instagram is great for pictures, but most people don't look at comments. So if you're trying to share tutorials or information, it falls apart there. Or you Twitter have text great. on the picture, right? Yeah, Twitter is great for meaningful and genuine engagement, but because it is so true to like, it doesn't push tweets, you have to be very conscientious about when you're posting who you're posting to and what the content is. And it's more about commenting on other people's stuff so that then people notice you as opposed to other social media mm -hmm. platforms. It's, if you guys are interested, there is a Facebook group. Um, I think it's just cosplay marketing, but we actually yeah, talk so, yeah. in depth about each different social media platform. Yeah. And the long and the short of it is 
each social media platform can be effective depending on if it suits your style or not. Yeah. I, I never remember to take pictures for tutorials. Instructables would not be as useful for me because I tend to put my head down and here's a pile of foam and suddenly it's cat noir and I took no <laughs> pictures. Yeah, see, I have so. to do photos because um, there are some tricks that I do that I will forget if I don't record them. So I put all the photos down and then I'm like, how did I do that last time? And then I look at it, I'm like, oh, that's how I did it. Cool. And then I remember. Um, and you compete a lot too. too. Hmm? You compete a lot as well. I compete a lot as well. So it's just gotten me into a good habit of making sure I have a record of how I created my costumes. Um, so we have a question from, um, we already said that Cosplay Man was kind of dead. I'm sorry, Ty. Um, on Pins and Needles, AKA Maggie, um, wants to know what our best experience that's come out of us utilizing social media. So basically, um, what social media platform has been our like best experience? Let's start with, um, we'll start with Amber cause you are our guest. I met Sam and Lena and Jess and Liz. <laughs> People! Yay, People! that's the uh, best reason. People media. People media. <laughs> um, Beyond that, I think one of the, the coolest things about um, social media is being able to build conversations and relationships with people who are in different locations. Um, I have one fan that has been kind of with me for forever. His name is Adam, and he's up in Seattle. And he's so genuinely, like, excited about everything and and i got to actually meet him at emerald city and it was one of those things where like i know this person because of my social media presence and it's 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 really cool like you know it it we we wouldn't have known each other otherwise and we wouldn't have had good conversations otherwise um but because of social media i was able to meet him and have a Great conversation. We take yearly selfies up until this year, of course. So <laughs> yeah, no selfies now. No. But, um, <laughs> what about actually you, someone mentioned what's earlier been your best about social media experience. Who? You. Who's Me? That? You're Liz, right? <gasps> oh my God. Um, uh, I would say, well, I mean, obviously I would agree that like um, the friends that you make, but um, I think one of the things I really like about um, a social media platform is, you know, the, there's people, cosplayers, that I really admire their work. And it's not like we're friends on Facebook or anything. Like, we're not like, we're not there yet. But um, I just, like, I admire the things that they do. And I really like watching their progress on their stuff. So it's kind of a way to, like, um, see what they're working on without us necessarily having to be, like, Facebook friends or anything like that. And what about you, Jess? Um, so for me, uh, so I use, um, I tried Pinterest, but you better be like on it with Pinterest and that just was done. DeviantArt is a little bit, um, but I've got some people that like belly buttons on DeviantArt. So that was a little bit strange for me. Um, <laughs> Facebook, I, I love Facebook because I've been on it for so long, but they've, they've really changed their algorithms and mm -hmm. I cannot figure it out. Yeah. Instagram for me has been the best absolutely the best i've been able to grow so fast on instagram um like again because of aesthetics and cosplay is about photos mostly um you know you know obviously for tutorials and stuff it's not always as great but i feel like instagram is probably one of if not the best tool i might be wrong but one of the like one of the best tools for cosplay um because people will just scroll you know i mean how many times have you just scrolled not read the comments like ooh, that cosplay is cool you know mm -hmm. i follow hashtags for like moana cosplay like monster high cosplay and it's awesome to see that stuff you know and i feel like that might be the best way to grow a cosplay community that's just me i feel like instagram is, is probably the best one of the best that makes sense. Sure. And when, when Lena comes back, we'll ask her too, because she has different perspectives on things than I do, because she's seeing things that are, you know, for a different pair of eyes. But um, I'm torn between um, Instructables and Instagram. Instagram, I've actually had like a lot of really good discussions and direct messages from people being like, okay, I'm sorry, that photo was dope. How the freak did you make that? And then I go into discussions or they're like, oh, where did you get that? And how do you use it? And is it safe? Um, so there's stuff around that, but uh, my instructables just, my instructables are what got me access to materials that other people didn't even get to use until like three or six months later. So 
I've, I've tested out like Warbler's Cobra Cast art for the Warbler company and um, I've used like um, Wonderflex World's um, Pro Mediums and I, it's just, I'd say it's definitely even with Instructables and Instagram. Instructables is really good if you want to build tutorials um, and really good for um, just kind of putting yourself out there as like an, a cosplay educator, which is kind of what I feel like I am. I'm not a pro cosplayer. I'm more of a cosplay educator. I want to keep people safe. You're good at that, though. You're really good. Easier. Huh? You are so good at, like, educating with cosplay. Like, you are, you are like, pro. I just she, like She does panels people. and everything. <laughs> patience. Like, lots of patience. Um, yeah. I don't know but where it comes one thing, from. But, um, <laughs> there's one thing, though, that I want to mention. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Well, I just want to talk about TikTok because we used to think, I, I know, like, we're... All of us, if you don't know, all of us are kind of like zennials, which are like the between the you no, know Gen X and, and millennials. We're, we're still millennials. I love. We them. are. We are. We are. <laughs> but we're also zennial. Well, I'm definitely a zennial, and I think you are too. You know, it depends on like where you were born. Like I'm kind of more like Gen X, but anyway, TikTok has blown up. We, you know, as a as a Gen Xer or um, you know a, a zen zennial, I would scroll and be like, what the heck is this TikTok thing? Like that's how old I am. But TikTok, I think, is growing for cosplay. Yes. I think it is a really good tool. We'll have to get somebody. I know somebody that is a TikTok expert. I'm I have not read it because I've been reading every single blog I can find on it. Good. Yeah. I, just I, I it. Uh, yeah, oh, I've had it for a while. I know, Liz, you just downloaded yours. I did. Do you have anything on it yet? Nope. <laughs> Two videos. And it's the stuff that we collaborated on. And I'm posting more. I'm trying to post some stuff weekly. And I'm starting to build up a repertoire. Oh, my God. We should show it. the video. Where is that? Uh, we should show it. And on Facebook. Um, but, Lena, we wanted to ask you a question. Ooh. Like, what social media platform do you think is the most, like, influential or has had best experience for you? Because you have a different set of eyes in this. Um... Gosh, you know what? I actually, as we were going, if you guys noticed me looking down and having my phone in front of my face, I actually went and just made myself an Instagram for Thermo Sidekick <laughs> because <laughs> really? Instagram is the number one place where everybody's like, I want to tag you. And I'm like, just tag Thermo Cosplay. They're like, we already tagged Thermo Cosplay. We want to tag you. I'm like, but I am part of Thermo Cosplay. <laughs> like, what do you want That's another me? thing, so too, I want to say. If you want to be a duo or a trio or quadruplets, it's fine. You don't have to be one person. I actually yeah. have several cosplay groups that are like, it's just one name and there's like a, like a community associated with it. Oh, hey, I'm the first follower of Thermo Sidekick. Oh, <laughs> Sidekick. Oh, sorry, sorry. I don't even oh, know. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, here. <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's happening. <laughs> I just them, and Lena, you know what? That's true because I always feel like tagging your personal, but I'm like, no, I don't want to mix that for her, you know? So that's cool. Yeah, and that's, that's why I decided to do it. I was like, Instagram is the number one place where people are, are tagging me a lot for cosplay stuff, but I'm like, it's mixing my cosplay stuff with my personal stuff, and I don't mind that much that being mixed. Like, oh my gosh, together, the picture but... you chose. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to follow Thermo Sidekick. Yeah, because I wanted to have something that had me and Sam because, you know, and then eventually I'm going to try to put some sort of tagline that's like, no, really go to thermocosplay.com. Do not follow this page. Like, that's not what this is for. But just so I had something I could be tagged in. It's kind of like Matthew has uh, mission control photography. Because yeah. for those of you who don't know, my husband does like all my photography. Uh, for the most part, I get to, I get the pleasure of working with some other photographers, but for the most part, uh, Matthew does all my photography and people kept going, uh, what do I tag? What do I tag? He's like, just tag your for Brady. It's fine. Like it's, it's all under her. It's fine. And he got so annoyed with people going, but you took the photo that he just, he's like, all right, fine. Here's my Instagram mission control photography. I think he's posted like a couple of times on it, but like it's literally just. Wait, there. there's no photos. I know. I just made yeah. it on this call. Yeah. Like as we fit in this, I created that just now. No, no, no. I mean on 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 Mac. Yes, you. Oh. Literally, he posts. He made the Instagram so that people would have something to tag. But but look at look at look at his tags. Like he's got all the people that tag him. Oh, I just yes. got it. Yeah, it's literally a tag bot. Is what that's there for. Like, yeah. he doesn't care. But, like, yeah. he, that's a great example because um, he does the photography and stuff like that. And 
he's not his marketing is through is is the efforts are all through me like the times that we want to do photo shoots or um sell prints or something like that his marketing is underneath the amber bright banner which is again why we switched to amber bright instead of uh firelight cosplay so that we could have more than just cosplay but it's also because the more different brands that you try and maintain like each brand is its own little baby and you got to carry it and swaddle it and sometimes it's got poop on it and you're like what the heck where'd you get that poop from so like long ago he decided that he didn't want anything out of his photography as far as making money or career or anything like that so he rolled the branding in underneath amber bright so like it's just a good example of if you don't want to do anything more with your cosplay or your photography or stop being bitchy you're fine um you don't have to all right so we have it's we have a question required. from one of our fans from maggie because she's awesome she wants it's okay. a two-part question okay uh what is your favorite shoot that you've done and is there a cosplay that you've made that you're like dang that's awesome who wants to go first um, I my for you. Oh, go no, ahead. No, no. Oh my go gosh, everyone's go. excited. Let's go to Liz. Liz, Liz has been quiet Liz. in the corner. <laughs> oh my god. Um, my favorite shoot that I've done, bros and cons, and uh, me and some friends went to the Yuma Sand Dunes to do a Star Wars shoot. That was just like about the coolest thing ever. Uh, I've Wait, always wanted to do it. it, and like literally the stars aligned. Like there was one day where all of us were free, and I was like, literally everyone write it down. If you don't write it down and forget it, I will kill you. Um, <laughs> But no, we like pulled it off and we all went and did the pictures and it was awesome. Like it was so much fun. Bros and cons is amazing. So the pictures look great, of course. Um, like, I don't know what they, I swear they like put like an ultra beauty filter on like. <laughs> they're so awesome. They're amazing. And the landscape. Um, but like the pictures look great. It was super cool. I've never seen the sand dunes in real life before. They're and like they're the perfect Star Wars right. set. I'm sharing so. screen. You get sand everywhere though. You go home and you're like, how is it up my nose? How? Oh, How yeah. Vic, my nose. Vic, Vic was definitely nose. saying. Yeah, that's one of them. Uh, that's Vic amazing. Was that she got a bunch of sand in the yeah. wheel of her camera. Yeah. Oh, no. The but last yeah. time I shot at the sand dunes, it literally destroyed all of the foam armor because the sand got in and worked the glue apart. So, oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So what about another Jessica, reason why? Since, since you've got access to a... Uh, to uh, photos, Jess, what's your favorite shoot and, and or cosplay? You, you know, uh, people ask me my favorite cosplay all the time, and I, I don't know. Okay, then your favorite photo shoot. Your favorite photo shoot. Like, what made you the um, happiest afterwards? My favorite photo shoot. <laughs> it's like a torture here. Okay, I think my favorite photo shoot was the Evolutions because that was so for me, that was the first time I met a lot of those cosplayers and actually got to know you guys. Um, and I feel like that was probably the funnest because I'm into cosplay for like the experience. Like I know people are in it for different reasons and that's totally fine. Like if you're in it to win it, that's cool. If you're in it to model, that's cool. Like I'm in it to have like a good time. Um, I wanna see if I can find this picture uh, a picture of us, but we did two photo shoots and they were both pretty fun. The one at Saba was cold though. <laughs> so I won't lie, like that one was a bit tough, but Are you yeah, talking about that the one, one at Cause Ty Ty Sabotin was really warm. Wait, no, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied. I just saw a picture. This was my favorite photo shoot. Let me pull it up and I didn't even make this costume. This is like the first costume I bought. Wait, is okay? it the KDA? <laughs> <laughs> that was gonna be my favorite Wait, photo shoot. It was the first time I felt sexy in a cosplay. Cause yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. <laughs> you freaking rocked that that uh yeah, RH too. Yeah. 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 Look how badass that is. Like, so was that's my fun, natural butt, guys. So I got a lot of butt. Yeah. Oh yeah. We were hot as shit. And I don't just mean like sexy, I mean yeah. like sweat pouring yeah. oh my off of us. Like, it's I September we and we're wearing inside, leather. Like some AC and bat off and keep coming in in turns because it was sweating yeah. so much. Yeah. Yeah, because the do the doorway was right there and it was the only oh, part yeah. of the building that was air conditioned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was also the first time I wore stilettos. No, I won't lie. This is great. I remember this one is amazing. Yeah. 
That my was mine too. Favorite. My favorite, favorite photo shoot. All right, what about you, Lena? Oh gosh. Uh, well, then I'll steal the one that Jessica was almost going to say, because then... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'll find a new um, picture. But I will, like, real quick shout out to Orange Slice. Doesn't always get us our pictures, like, super, super fast, but every time they come back, they are amazing. And You're I awesome. feel like that's partially because oh. me, you know, I am, as the thermo sidekick, like, I don't do the... I, I'm not as deep into cosplay world as a lot of other people, and so I feel like a lot of other people like kind of know their poses, know their points. Like I, I immediately just snap into three quarter turn and I know exactly how I'm gonna look in this picture. And I'm not that person. Um, and so I really appreciate anytime I get an experience with a photographer that knows how to and will help me show my best side, make sure I'm in my best pose, make sure I'm in my best position and make sure I'm like, you know, doing the best thing for the camera. Uh, and he usually does a really good job. And uh, so does Amber's husband, I will also say there. Um, oh, yeah. So probably my two favorite photographers for exactly that reason, because they'll be like, okay, cheat your hips a little bit more this way. Nope, turn them that way. Not quite this way. Like, put your head up this way or down or, you know, that kind of thing. Not every photographer is going to take the time to do that. And the ones that 100%. do, they are like, Instantly, I, I'm going to give you tips if you're going to like, I yeah. mean, you're giving me tips. So I'm going to give you my <laughs> tips for, for doing that for me because the pictures always come out great. But more than that, the the evolutions exactly for the reasons Jessica said. I'm in into cosplay. Is it the cosplay personally. plan, Jess? Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to find it. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm personally into cosplay because I enjoy it. But what's kept me in cosplay? Play is all the awesome people that I've met as a result of that and we had what was that nine people in that group I think so, yeah it was it is amazing that we took a con as big as Sabo and we had nine people and we managed to get everybody from point A to point B to point C yeah. all of us to like we like, that chain, we like had hand chains we like all yeah. the credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> um but it that day was just so much fun because I love every single person that was in that group. Yeah. Okay, Everybody this is great. this is from Sabo, but this is this is the Evolutions group. Yeah, so that was so we even had people kind of fill in here and there. Um, so That's that was the. That's a oh, sorry, I said Sabo. Sabo was the first time we did it. This photo is by um, King Cart King Cart Photography. So this was a lot of fun. It was cold that day. Yeah, it was. It was in January. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, these are Sunset Dragon designs. I had I, I love this group, like this group, and I hope you know we can reconvene at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think everyone had fun making their. I, I I don't know. I speak for everybody. I don't know. I had fun yeah. <laughs> making my costume. Um, but yeah, there's Lena. Look at her. No <laughs> yeah, thermo sidekick the, there. The, the like, powder of my cosplay costumes as well. Uh, that I think that's another reason that I love that group is because a lot of times I. I'm so busy and I don't feel like I have a lot of time for cosplay. And so a lot of times I feel like I'm like the B movie, you know, like there's the A movie that everybody comes for. And then I'm like the B movie that's like, oh, I'm just part of the group. But like this costume, I'm like, you yeah, nailed it. You know, like I was. <laughs> yeah, so you look great in that one. Um, All right, Amber, it's your turn. Help me, but I got it. So. Okay. I have a serious one and then I have a troll one. So what do you want first? Uh, uh, Surprises. Yeah, you surprise us. <laughs> okay. So we'll start with the troll one. Um, that was a surprise. So a little bit of backstory. Um, one of the first cosplays I did was Cammy from Street Fighter, right? And I loved doing Cammy. I loved being Cammy. However, every single time I wore Cammy, I got a shit comment about my body. Every single time. Too skinny, Standard. she needs to eat a sandwich, et cetera, et cetera. Please be the troll one I think it is, please. It, it is, it is, it is. So I was like, you know what? Like if they're gonna comment on my body, if they're going to, if they're going to have judgment about who and what I do, we're gonna give them something to really just really love. So my skinny white girl ass uh, cosplayed Zangief, the giant muscle man with a chest hair bra and it's like beauty on her makeup. page. Go to her page. It's on her page. Like capitalize on it, man. Like why not? Okay, I'm, right? I guess I'm the screen sharer. Give me. Keep talking. I'll look. 
It's a, there's a bunch in my tag. If you go to my Instagram and go to my tag, he's in there. We haven't done an actual photo shoot with him, but where'd you like, wear it to? You? Um, LA, LA Comic Con. Con. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So it's one of those the cosplays that one of the best parts of it is everyone else's reaction to it, and on its own. I love wearing it because like it's, I feel so salty and so powerful in my salt. Like, oh, man. look at, look at my level of trollness and look what it has wrought upon the world. And just <laughs> walking through the convention, the best thing ever was watching people's faces as they're like, what? That's saying, oh my God, that's Zangief. Oh my God, that's Zangief. Oh, here I found it. Look, there. there. I had the full beauty, beauty makeup. I had a beard. I had the full. Shred. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. I had trouble. Fine. I'm not sober, guys. I'm sorry. That's fine. Not not pictured is the fact that I had the shin hair and everything. Like, so this this cosplay was my ultimate love letter to the Street Fighter community, at least the toxic part of it, and it yeah, remains it kind of my like five years ago. I never would have done something like that. Like I would never, never have had the balls to do something like that. And I look at it and look how far I've come that I walked around all day in a fucking chest hair bra. That is amazing. And that I have is like, that is like com complete like self awareness. Like you are on yeah. it. Like I, I love this. Yeah. It's so, it's, it's the best. I love it's it best. so much Sorry. too. Like, <laughs> But it's one of those things that I had a guy who came up to me and he's like, wow, you must be super confident to wear that. And I look at him and I go, I got big balls. <laughs> and then he like got really weird and like walked away. So I don't, I don't know what he was expecting, but I don't think he yeah. was expecting me to be like, yeah, look at my giant ass balls. But yeah, the like, trolls want you to respond in a certain way. And you certainly didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I was like, no, I know what I'm wearing. I'm having fun. So, so that. That one for me, because I've always been kind of shy and ashamed of my body and how I look. And um, when I first started the whole cosplay thing, I was very anti-sexy cosplay because that's kind of the brain thing that had been put in, you know, um, thank you culture for making us ashamed of our own bodies. So like, I love to look at that now and be like, yes, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah so that's my troll answer my my serious answer is um and i like that we have a view of jess's chair again apparently it's the chair so lonely is, right it's so lonely um my my serious answer is um some of you might remember grant the photographer grant for may mm. One of, um, so he was an amazing photographer here in Arizona. Um, he did pass away. We missed him terribly. He was such a sweetheart. I loved him so much. Um, but he caught some pictures of my Twi'lek outside of, I think, the Mesa Convention Center. And I remember getting those pictures back and just like holding my phone so tightly because I couldn't believe I looked that way. Like I couldn't believe I looked that good. And I think that was the one of the first times that I felt really good about my cosplay and really good about what I'd created and what I'd made. That's awesome. So, so I'll make this fast because we need to start kind of wrapping up for the night. But I already told it's you what my though. favorite shoot was, is the KDA. Cause like I said, it's the first time I ever felt sexy and that's really hard for me to do. Um, I have body image great. issues. I've had them my whole life because I have metabolism issues. So, um, I war with myself constantly and that's okay. Just keep on the upbeat and I try to be positive. But as far as my favorite costume, that's 100% right now, Yojimbo. <laughs> it, I, you I hate, hate putting that different. thing on. There's so many damn layers, <laughs> but it's my favorite costume. <laughs> yeah. Well, you put a lot of work into it and it's it's so personalized too like which is really amazing and that's one of my favorite things about cosplay and going back circling way back to branding and marketing like uh, one of the things that i love about cosplay is you can have a design that somebody makes and then have 
interpretations of it, you know? If you put 10 Harley Quinns all next to each other, they're going to look different in mm -hmm. subtle ways. And yeah. I mean, Jimbo, you just like fucking nailed every part of it. Like, <laughs> I love that character and I love that I literally carry, I carry around a money bag at cons as my purse because he's greedy. <laughs> So, so good. <laughs> yeah, but all right. So we're going to go ahead and, and we're going to start wrapping it up um, real quick. Uh, we want to thank Amber Bright Props for being a guest with us this evening. Um, want to thank Ambrose Cosplay, Jinx Cosplay, Thermo Cosplay, Thermo Sidekick. Check out my <laughs> Instagram. Um, <laughs> no, 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 really don't. I'm not planning on putting anything on there. <laughs> um, it's Just made it for whatever. Yeah, Don't make me do work, wonderful please. talking to all of you. I know that there's a slight delay, so I'm going to give you one second to post something, and that's it, and we'll have a quick answer for you. Um, real quick, let's start going by with where people can reach you and how they can find you. Let's go with Liz, since you're in the bottom corner. Um, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instructables, all of it is Ambrose underscore cosplay, except for Facebook, uh, no underscore. All right, Jess? Yeah, um, I, I don't think we touched on it, but when you do find your name, try and get your handle in every single like social media, because I did not. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I am the Jinx Cosplay on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And then I all, am also on Twitch at JinxNet and YouTube on JinxNet. So that's where you can find me. All right. And I also, my website, jinxcosplay.com. Amber? I am Amber Bright Props on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, pretty sure. I'm just Amber Bright on Twitch, but amberbrightprops.com is my website. I am on TikTok. I don't remember what I put on TikTok. I, I, I'm probably Amber Bright, but um, mostly I'm active on Instagram. And uh, yeah, mostly Instagram. I am uh, Lena and I. Well, Lena's thermal sidekick on Instagram now. Uh, but Lena oh, and right. I are thermal cosplay on pretty much everything Instructables, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok um cosplaygoals.com the rpf forum it keeps going so if you just go to thermocosplay.com you'll find us <laughs> um thank you all for watching our stream we will post the well actually we already did post the completed link but what the heck i'll post it again um <laughs> and uh thank you for sticking with us even though youtube kicked us off because we either showed a label or we said something because y'all are luscious that's why we're too good. They were jealous. I mean, they're just <laughs> angry. All right, guys. This is all of us saying good night, goodbye, and thank you for watching. Thank you so much, guys, for watching.